Welcome to Electron Line. Remember that impulse is actually a vector. Just like force is a vector, impulse is a vector as well. And so therefore, direction is very important. Technically, we should write impulse like this with a little arrow on top, indicating it's a vector because it's set equal to force times delta t, and we know that force is a vector as well. Therefore, the left side must equal the right side. Since the right side is a vector, the left side is a vector as well. So let's look at four simple examples to see what the final velocity will be with an object that's initially moving in some direction, it has a certain amount of mass, and some impulse in a particular direction is applied to the object. So here we have a 4 kilogram object moving initially at 5 meters per second. An impulse of 10 kilogram meters per second hits the object, is applied to the object, and the object will therefore have a change in velocity. What will be the final velocity? Well, it will be the initial velocity plus the change in the velocity. And the change in the velocity can be calculated from the change in momentum, which is equal to the impulse. Or, more simply, we can say that the impulse is equal to the mass times the change in the velocity. Now, notice the impulse is applied to the right. That's a positive direction. So it's going to be equal to, we can say that 10 for the impulse is equal to the mass, which is 4, times the change in velocity. Well, that's what we're trying to find, because once we know the change in the velocity, we can then figure out the final velocity. Well, dividing both sides by 4, we can say that this divided by 4, this divided by 4, this cancels. The change in velocity is equal to a positive 2.5 meters per second. So therefore, we can say that v final equals v initial plus the change in velocity which is equal to 5 plus 2.5, which is 7.5 meters per second. So that's how we utilize the definition of the impulse, saying that the impulse is equal to the change in momentum, which is the mass times the change in velocity. From that, we find the change in velocity. We keep the direction correct because a positive impulse will give a positive change in the velocity. Add that to the initial velocity, and we have the final velocity. So what happens when the very same object with the same mass and the same initial velocity now has an impulse imparted on it in the negative direction? What will be the final result from that? So first let's find the change in the velocity. We know that the impulse is equal to the mass times the change in velocity, so therefore a minus 40 kilogram meter per second equals 4 kilograms, oh, I don't need the kilograms, I'll just leave the units off, times a change in velocity. Notice when I divide both sides of that equation by 4, we can see that the change in velocity is equal to minus 10 meters per second. Now that we know the change in velocity caused by the impulse, we can find the final velocity. V final equals V initial plus the change. In this case, that would be 5 minus 10, because I'm adding a negative quantity, which is a minus 5 meters per second. Notice that after the impulse is applied to the object, the object will now have a negative velocity of 5 meters per second, or 5 meters per second in the negative direction, which is a change in the negative direction of 10 meters per second. 5 plus a negative 10 gives us minus 5 meters per second. Our third example, we have an object of 2 kilograms moving to the left at 5 meters per second, and a positive impulse is applied to it. Again, we can find the change in velocity by saying that the impulse is equal to the mass times the change in velocity. Impulse is a positive 30 kilogram meters per second. The mass is 2 kilograms, and the change in velocity can be calculated from this by dividing both sides by 2. The change in velocity, therefore, is equal to 15 meters per second. Notice it's a positive 15 meters per second because the impulse is applied to the right in a positive direction. We can then say that the final velocity equals the initial velocity plus the change in velocity. So in this case, it's a minus 5 meters per second plus a positive 15, which means we have a final velocity of 10 meters per second in the positive direction. And finally, for our last example, here we have a, an object that's already moving to the right. A positive impulse is applied, which means that
The change of velocity will be positive, so it will not have a greater velocity to the right. Again, we say that the impulse equals mass times the change in velocity. The impulse is 20, the mass is 2. Change in velocity, therefore, from this can be calculated to be equal to 10 meters per second. So we can see here that V final, which is equal to V initial, plus the change in velocity. In this case, that's 5 plus 10, or a positive 15 meters per second. And so that's why we have to keep in mind that when we're dealing with impulse, we know it's a vector quantity. Direction of the impulse is important. A positive impulse will change the direction in, to the right. A negative impulse will change the direction towards the left or give it a larger positive velocity, a greater negative velocity, or may change a positive velocity into negative velocity depending again upon which direction the impulse is acting. And here you can see with the examples that that's how it works.